машину уебывает. Здесь типа. А вот машина на мосту. Ваша? Работаю. Прям... А, да, 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 да. Так, и, так и планирую. В ребро опять, да, желательно? Чуть-чуть выше, -чуть, ага, вот отлично. Отлично, ничего там, это огонь на берегу. Ага, подходит ракета к мосту. Ну, отлично. Да. Нет, оно. Все, нашел мост. Хорошо. Здесь он. О, машина полыхает, охуенно, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to my new video. I'm going to be talking about these Iranian drones, which are causing absolute havoc in Ukraine at the moment. And I'm also going to be talking about what would happen if there was a nuclear escalation between the UK and Russia. And without further ado, let's carry on with the show. So these Iranian drones are causing absolute havoc all over Ukraine. And it's absolutely freaking the hell out of NATO. It's freaking the hell out of the USA. Um, it's freaking the hell out of the rest of the world, and especially countries like Israel as well. So I'm going to tell you why. First of all, the West thought that the Iranians are completely useless. They can't build their own weapons. Don't forget, for, don't forget they have been sanctioned like one of the biggest countries that's been sanctioned for years since since the Isra Islamic Revolution. They have been sanctioned ever since then. And um, you're talking a long time. Iran was the biggest sanctioned country um, before Russia had been the biggest sanctioned country. And Iranian people have been suffering for years. You know, the inflation has been going through the roof and and the Iranian people have been really suffering, especially during COVID. They have no access to medicine, no access to any vaccines. So they have been really suffering. And the West probably thought the Iranian um, military is more or less dead. Um, they've got nothing. And they are, they're in absolute shock right now watching these um, Iranian drones in action. They're, they're in absolute shock. And the reason they're in shock is because First of all, they're really cheap. Uh, they cost between $10,000 to $20,000, and some even come to around $5,000. And let me tell you something. When these Iranian drones are flying around in Ukraine, these anti-aircraft missiles, if there are any left in Ukraine, they cost a lot more compared to what these drones cost. And there are estimates that these um, anti-aircraft missiles, each one cost like over six million or something like that, or maybe maybe less, but between one and six million. And these Iranian drones cost ten thousand dollars. Compare the difference. So if you if you use these anti-aircraft missiles to shoot down these drones, who loses? In the day, it's the Ukrainians that will lose. Not only are they going to lose. Um, a really expensive missile, but also they're going to give up, give away their um, the area. They're going to give away their location, and once you give away your location, you're going to be a target. So it's a big problem, really. And you know, there's clips of like um, police officers and army officers trying to shoot down these drones with their machine guns, and it's all over the internet. And even Scott Ritter was talking about it as well. 
So here's the thing: Iranians have denied these are Iranian drones, but you can have a you can actually see that they are definitely Iranian drones. Um, Russia has taken them and obviously painted on top of it, put their own serial numbers on it, and things like that. But everyone knows these are Iranian drones. This is really good for Russia because they can buy a lot of these drones, and they have been very effective, very very eff effective. You know, Russia only has to use a few, and they can they can cause million million dollars of damage destroy expensive high mars equipments and other expensive equipments only for the cost of ten thousand dollars of these drones and they are very noisy and the reason they're noisy is because they are using um, some chinese engines remember the investment that um deal that china signed with the iranians um quite some some time ago as part of that agreement there was a an agreement to share technology as well, like military technology as part of the agreement. And in return, China will buy oil from Iran, buy gas, and they will also help um, Iran integrate uh, with the BRI. But there is a part in that agreement where China would help Iran in, in military matters. They will kind of share um, experiences and technology. And, and these are Chinese engines that are used. <clears throat> they are very noisy. But it doesn't matter because I think that's the whole point. That's the whole point. When you hear these drones uh, flying above you, they are almost daring you to shoot them down. So they're almost like saying to these anti-aircraft missiles, you know what? If you want to use your anti-aircraft missiles costing millions and give away your position to shoot me down, then go ahead. I think that's the whole point of, of, of these drones being noisy. And they're also there to scare people as well because when you hear these drones flying around, on top of your head, you've got no choice but to start giving away your position, start shooting at it. And you can see how panicked some of these, you know, army officers and police officers are just trying to shoot, shoot it down. But it's no use. And Americans are absolutely freaking out. They are telling Iran not to give weapons to Russia. But what the hell, what the hell are they going to do? You know, they have been sanctioned Russia to death. They have sanctioned Iran to death. So what what are they going to do to Russia, Russia or Iran? What are they going to do to Iran? Are they going to sanction Iran even more? They can't. Iran is already under max sanctions. And let me tell you something. If they had agreed to the JCPOA back then, a few months ago, none of this would have happened. Iran would have gladly signed up to that deal. All of these sanctions would have been removed. And Iran would not have been supplying weapons to Russia. But because Biden and his team have been dragging their heels, not signing this JCPOA. Iran is still under maximum sanctions, so they can do whatever the hell they want. You know, no, even North Korea can sell uh, weapons to, to Russia. But one country who, who is not supplying weapons to Russia is China, because China is very, very careful not supplying direct, you know, weapons to Russia. and it, you know, if if China basically helps Russia in that way, China would be in big trouble, and and they don't want to escalate things on their side because they want to try and stay as neutral as they can. Behind the scenes, they are supporting Putin, but in front of the whole world, they can't be seeing supplying weapons to to Russia, and this is why you don't hear um, the West talking about Chinese weapons in Russia. Because I think uh, that's one of the things that China has refused to do, uh, send weapons to Russia to be used in Ukraine. But however, Iran does not have that kind of um, agreement with the West. Iran does not need to do anything for the West. Iran is completely blocked off from the West you know, under maximum sanctions. So they can do whatever the hell they want. They are free. What are they going to do? Sanction uh, Iran even more? They can't. They absolutely can't. And I'll tell you what this will do for Iran, first of all. This will put Iran on the map. The Iran, you know, is finally uh, able to produce really, really good weapons. So countries like Israel, who are talking about invading Iran or blowing up Iran's nuclear facilities, they are going to think twice now because they're going to think, oh, crap, you know, what if we um, attack Iran 
And then Iran starts sending hundreds and thousands of these uh, drones all over Israel. So, you know, this is going to cause havoc all over Israel. So this is one thing. This is like a really big deterrence to the West that you don't know, you don't want to mess with Iran. Secondly, this will improve Iranian um, military even more. Because if Russia is buying all of these um, drones from, from Iran, this is going to put more money into the Iranian military. This is going to give them more confidence and more money will go to their military industrial complex. And in return, they will produce even better quality drones, more drones, because if they can sell it to other markets and the whole world is watching how effective they are. And you can imagine how a lot of countries behind the scenes will secretly want to try and buy these Iranian drones for themselves. Because, you know, the Uranium, Ukrainian battlefield is like um, a selling ground for, com com you know, com companies and countries trying to show off their weapons. And obviously, the United States have been sh showing off the HIMARS and stuff like that. Um, but this kind of battlefield has got one star. And I think the, the main star has been these uh, Iranian drones. Everyone's talking about it. There's so many channels talking about it. And these are, unlike the American HIMARS and stuff, these have been proved to be very successful. So it's like going to a World Cup when you're watching all of these players play. And then one of these players stand out. Um, he plays he plays an amazing game and everybody wants him all the football team all the football you know teams around the world want that player this is the same way you know during this war i bet you a lot of countries will want these iranian drones for themselves and this is only going to be good for iran um iran is also showing off their military showing off their pride that you know we are not a small country uh, you cannot walk all over us like you've done in Libya, like in Iraq, like in Syria. We are a completely different kettle of fish. And Iran has shown that they are not going to be an easy prey for the West to kind of bully around. And the final thing is maybe at least the West will start respecting Iran a bit more and um, quickly sign that JCPOA as soon as possible. Because once you sign that JCPOA, Iran is back with the global system. All the sanctions will be lifted. Um, you know, they can start selling oil all over the world. They can start selling gas all over the world, especially to Europe. And it's going to help the world. It's not going to, it's not going to just help Iranians. It's also going to help the Euro Europeans and the rest of the world. And it's just a win-win situation. History has shown that sanctions never work. You know, name one country where U.S. or the West has placed sanctions on it and suddenly there was a regime change and they managed to get um, whoever they want back in power. It doesn't work. The only people that get affected are the people itself. You know, people who have ac do not have access to good medicine and things like that. It just affects the people. Um, and it's about time the U.S. and the West starts lifting sanctions against not only Iran, but also Venezuela, Cuba. I think altogether, there are about 60 countries that the West have placed sanctions on. It's about time they get released because um, history has shown sanctions never work. And obviously, the biggest example is the sanctions um, being backfired against Russia. I think that was one sanction too many for the West. And this is what happens when you sanction 60 countries, including Russia, you know, you are basically asking for trouble. And this is why these sanctions have completely boomeranged against the West. So let me tell you something. If you, are, if you have a car and you obviously need petrol to drive this car around, and people say that Russia is a gas station, you know, masquerading as a country. So if you're going to sanction Russia, you have to make sure that when you drive long distances with your car, that Russia is not one of the petrol stations you need to fill up your car. Otherwise, if you don't um, fill up your car in that gas station, you're going to end up in the middle of nowhere with no gas, no petrol, nowhere to go. And this is exactly what's happened to the West. They thought Russia is a, some sort of um, gas station parading as a country. 
they decided to completely sanction it and now they are stuck in the middle of a desert in a car with no no petrol nowhere to go no clue what to do next and this is exactly what's happened so why is russia buying these drones from iran well first of all you know to make a drone to make a missile it takes a long time you know you need the raw materials you need to go through uh, the factories uh, you need to build it and all of that takes time russia is in the middle of a war right now they don't have time to build drones they don't have time to build missiles you know they are using the whole inventory and they are also thinking of buying missiles from iran as well R iran has got a lot of missiles stockpiled so it's much easier to buy from another country rather than make it yourself because you know to make it just takes too long it's much easier to buy and right now russia cannot buy missiles and you know military equipment from other countries because all the other countries around the world they need to um show that they are neutral they cannot get involved um because they're scared of being sanctioned etc uh so this is the problem that russia is having so they can only rely on, on a few countries uh, like iran like north korea like venezuela uh like even india but india is also not allowed to sell uh, russia any weapons because india also has links to the west as well as um links to russia as well i was going to talk about this article which i saw in the gray zone and basically they're saying how british intelligence may have been involved in the ukrainian bridge the kursk bridge blowing up and they have kind of discussed how and why uh, the British got involved, the evidence that they. So, as a summary, US is in no position to tell Iran who to sell their weapons to. And if they want Iran to stop, then go back to the negotiation table, sign the JCPOA, get rid of all of the sanctions. Then maybe Iran will, you know, think about whether they can sell these weapons to Russia or not. But until then, Iran can do whatever the hell they want. US is in no position to tell Iran what to do, especially after all of these years of putting Iran into sanctions. So they are going to look after their own interests. They are going to find ways to make money. If a country is out there that wants to buy these drones, I'm sure Iran will sell it to them. And I, and I believe a lot more countries will start buying, buying these drones after watching them in action. They have. But I have read the article. I must admit, there isn't any smoking gun uh, that British were involved, but I wouldn't be surprised, to be honest. Uh, it is something that they would actually do. And, you know, there's a lot of um, coincidences, a lot of um, trails uh, that the British could have done it, why and uh, when they would have done it. Uh, things like the stamp. Um, that was on the wall in the Ukraine where people were taking selfies. Looks like that stamp was done way in advance because you can't just blow up the bridge and have that stamp on the wall done straight away. So there were obviously plans to blow up the bridge and the British intelligence probably were involved in thinking about how to blow it up with the Ukrainians. Um, obviously, they haven't said at any point that they would have used suicide bombing tactics i think that's pretty low if they did uh, like i said i couldn't find any smoking guns but i am you know it's one of those things it's like the Nord stream one and two pipeline that got blown up we all know that the us was involved in some way or other but end of the day there's no evidence of it and, and in the court of law you need evidence you need hard Truths, you need proof, things like that. You, you know, you, you might, if you're in a court and you, you know that the murderer did it, you know that he's guilty, but the thing is, you have to prove it. And that's the issue, really. And, you know, Sweden has said to Russia uh, they can go in and do their own investigations. But, you know, like I said, I said on the um, Duran, there's no point going to a murder scene two weeks later and investigating it. You know, anyone that Anyone could have gone to the murder scene, cleaned up all the evidence, cleaned up all traces of, you know, traces of like proof that they did it. Um, there's no point going in there a couple of weeks later and saying, all right, you know what, we've cleaned you up. Now you go and do your own investigation.
doesn't make any sense. So yeah, we we all know um, probably the British were involved in some point, but you know, end of the day, we need proof. So this uh, this video I'm going to be making is basically about British um, targets. Uh, if there is a nuclear war with Russia, and I'm not saying there will be, but in case there is, and there are some articles out, basically, some top secret articles, which just I managed to get hold of. And these are the ones, and you can see these um, top secret um, articles about all of the British targets that the Russians would um, target if it came to nuclear attack. And I'm gonna basically, I'm gonna be basically making it easy for you. Uh, in total, there are 106 possible nuclear targets in uh, UK, but I'm probably gonna be talking about the top 10 um, because I don't wanna go through the, all of the targets. Um, I'm just gonna talk about probably the most important ones, and then we can kind of go from there. So before I go into the list of targets, and obviously you've seen from the picture here, this will be one of the first targets. This is one of the most advanced radar systems we have in England. This is held in North Yorkshire. And before I kind of talk about it, I want to kind of say that this is only theoretical, by the way. Um, this is no means warmongering, or I'm not using any scare tactics that this is going to happen. This is purely my views uh, on what the major targets would be in, in, in England. And i got to say, you just have to look at what Russia is doing to Ukraine, and, and you have to understand that they're going to try and avoid as much uh, civilian deaths as possible. And this is why um, Russia is fighting Ukraine the way they are fighting. They are trying to avoid as much civilian deaths as possible. Uh, they're not trying to destroy the infrastructure as much, and they are pretty much showing off their power without killing the whole population. And this is probably what they're going to do with UK. They're going to be hitting all major military sites. And I was thinking about, there are a couple of um, NATO offices, and you've got the MI5 offices in London. I doubt if Russia would use nukes in anywhere near London because of the huge casualty rate, huge amounts of people that will be killed. Um, so offices around London, NATO offices, MI5 offices, I think Russia will probably hit them with conventional weapons. So it's going to be a mix of conventional weapons and nuclear if they if if we kind of went ahead in a nuclear exchange. So this will be the first target. It's called the RAF Flying Dales in North Yorkshire. This provides a continuous ballistic missile early warning system to the UK and US governments, ensuring a surprise missile attack which cannot succeed. So if they wanted to attack, this will probably be the first target in the UK. And once you take this out, and I believe, I did some research on this, I believe this is the only anti-ballistic early warning missile system in the UK and I don't think they have any other backups. Um, they're going to hit this with a nuke to make sure it's completely destroyed and all of the command and control centers that are scattered around it will also be destroyed as well and they will want to make sure they hit this with a nuke so make sure it's never ever operational ever again and also nobody goes near it. So this will be the first target. So the second major target uh, for any attack, and this will be a nuclear attack, by the way, because they'll want to make sure this gets destroyed. So this will be HNMB, which is the largest naval base in UK. And this is um, somewhere in Scotland. And this is definitely the most um, advanced naval base that England has got. It houses nuclear submarines. It houses nuclear weapons. Uh, lots of nuclear technology in there as well. Uh, all of the naval ships and stuff. So it's a huge, huge base. And if Russia take this out, this will be a huge blow to UK. And this uh, this is why I believe this will be the second major target uh, when Russia does attack. And they will need to make sure they hit it with a nuke and completely take it out and all of the surrounding um, command and com control centers, all the surrounding submarines, ships, anything military-wise. 
In terms of casualties, we're looking at between three to 5,000 people dead and up to 40,000 people injured, uh, we're looking at. So this will be a huge, huge loss um, if Britain loses this. The next target would be something called um, the Royal Air Force Lakenheath, and this is near the south of England. And this house is some of the most advanced military jets. They have the F-35s and many other advanced military jets in there. They also train a lot of um, new recruits, train them in uh, how to uh, fly, fly these um, you know, F-35s. They've got the U.S. command and control centers in there. So this is a huge RAF base, and this will be a huge blow if it gets taken out. And I believe this will be the next target for the Russians. And again, they will probably hit it with one nuclear weapons, causing probably between three to 5,000 killed, and probably up to twenty to 30,000 injured. And this will be a huge blow if it gets taken out. Uh, this will severely impact Britain's um, air force. The next one will be the um, Royal Naval Naval Base in Portsmouth, and again, this has got some some of the most cutting edge um, naval ships um, housed in that um, area, and this is one of the biggest ones in UK as well, and it also houses the England's aircraft carrier as well. So this would be a huge blow if this gets taken out along with its aircraft carrier. So again, Russia will want to hit this with a nuke, not only to take out um, all the uh, all of the kind of military installations, but it'll also want to take out the you know aircraft carrier in case it's still there. Obviously, UK has got many other military bases um, plotted all over the UK. But they're not all going to be hit with nuclear weapons. I believe those are probably going to be hit with conventional weapons and ballistic missiles. However, I'm going to now talk about data centers. These data centers will probably be hit by nukes because Russia will want to make sure all of this data uh, gets destroyed. Um, so it really hampers, you know, command and control and intelligence as well. And, you know, Britain has got a lot of data centers, but they'll probably take out the most important ones. And there's a big list of data centers in this website. And smaller ones they'll probably take out with conventional weapons. And also they'll want to take out any backup data centers as well, because nowadays in UK, you, you don't have everything in one data center. You basically have backup um, solutions as well. You have kind of standby solutions, standby data centers. So Russia will make sure will need to make sure they take out those as well. So the next target Russia will probably target with nukes are oil refineries refineries in UK. Because once you take out the oil refineries, you know, there's not really much UK can do if, if for a counterattack because they need oil um, to be able to mount uh, counter attack against Russia, and you know they'll, they'll probably take out these oil refineries and also any LNG terminals as well, uh, any oil storage places as well. But not all of them will be hit by nukes. But I believe that they will start hitting the biggest refineries in UK with nukes. They'll want to make sure these are never used. They'll probably use um, a nuke on pr probably one or two of the LNG. Uh, terminals as well. I believe Britain has got about two um, LNG terminals, and uh, I'm not sure if they're building some more. But um, yeah, once you take out these uh, refineries, LNG terminals, and gas and oil storage places, they really you know hampers Britain's ability to fight back. The next thing they will take out are all of these major ports uh, in and around UK. Uh, they will want to make sure that. Britain does not get any, um, you know, weapon shipments from United States and the rest of Europe. Uh, so they want to make sure these ports, uh, all all major ports, are taken out in UK. Even the small ones will be taken out by conventional, but I believe the major ones will probably be taken out by nuclear. Uh, they'll probably want to use nuclear because they want to probably destroy 
the whole port and make it completely disabled so they will never ever be able to be operated on again and you know take in um, deliveries in terms of um, military and hardware and stuff they might keep one or two ports open for humanitarian purposes um, but you know I'm not sure which ones so so yeah the ports are going to be a major target for the Russians So you can see the full list here. There's around 23 naval RAF bases, 14 USAF bases, 10 radar stations, 8 military control centers, 7 naval communication centers, 6 naval bases. So all of these will probably be destroyed. Either they'll use um, a nuclear or they'll use conventional weapon, depends on the size, or they'll probably use a bit of both. Um, I'm not sure. They'll probably want to also um, destroy some of the infrastructure as well. Uh, they'll probably target the Channel Tunnel, mainly because they don't want um, Britain to get any sorts of um, reinforcements coming through the uh, from coming through the tunnel. And um, they'll probably destroy lots of um, like uh, power stations as well. Um, same way they're, they're what they're doing to Ukraine. They'll probably also target any high value targets things like 10 downing street and stuff like that um because you know and they probably won't hit anywhere london with a nuclear but they'll probably hit 10 downing street with the conventional weapons but there's hundreds of these even thousands of these targets um scattered around all over uk these are kind of high value targets um where there's going to be um high value people like the president generals and mps and and things like that so they probably want to take out the parliament and a few other things as well um but at the end of the day this is only just theoretical guys i'm not saying it's going to happen uh, but the way britain is getting involved in this conflict with um with russia over ukraine you know they are really asking for trouble and you got People like Liz Truss and openly saying they're gonna, they're not scared of using getting into a nuclear war with Russia and and even the kind of the leaders of the armed services is also saying the same thing. So rather than de-escalate things, you know, it seems like they're just escalating things. And if they are involved in this Crimean bridge attack, you know, that could seriously escalate things to another level. Uh, I, I really hope they was they were not involved. Um, obviously, it looks like they could have been, but I really seriously hope they they are not, because this is not going to bode well for the UK. So that's all I have time for today, guys. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care for now.